Hey everyone, thanks for hopping on with me today. Wanted to go over purchase orders, kind of a cool function uh, within DBP here. So, you know, one of the first places you want to start with purchase orders is making sure that you get suppliers created. So obviously you've got to have suppliers in the system tied back to products in order to be able to use purchase orders. So you just want to build out a, a basic supplier profile. Um, not much required here besides the supplier details. You don't have to give a, a supplier access to the system. Um, you're just entering their information in here so that you can then tie it back to a product. So then when you're on a product page, for example, the almonds here, you'll see there's a drop down for who the supplier is. So let's mark it, it's nuts farm here. So be sure to create your supplier profiles, um, tie them to the products, then purchase orders are gonna start making sense. So if we go down here to the purchase order section, I'm gonna click create purchase order. And um, this allows us to um, first and foremost, choose which suppliers we wanna deal with. They're all selected by default. So usually I, I just leave that as it is, um, unless there's a reason you wanna work with just a specific supplier. By selecting all suppliers just by default here, that means it's just gonna generate purchase orders we need based on the orders in the system. And then you'll see your next choice is what, what date range do we wanna set this for? I'm gonna just click this week. So I'm gonna create purchase orders based on orders in the system that exist for this week. But you could obviously throw any date range you want at this. You can hand pick one or you can click, the, or click these quick links. Um, all routes are already selected for us and all membership levels are already selected for us. So typically you're gonna leave everything on the screen default except for that date range. You'll see another option here though is you could cl uh, click create blank purchase orders. So if you wanna hand build a purchase order where you're gonna pick and choose what you put into that um, for which suppliers, et cetera, that's an option we'll take a look at here in a second. So again, I just chose this week left everything else default, and now I'm gonna click Generate Purchase Orders. It then looks at the data in the system and it says, okay, we've got you know, 158 orders for this week, here's what they contain, here's exactly what we need to have based on what's in those orders. Um, keep in mind, this is literal off the orders. It hasn't taken into account our inventory that we already have on hand. This is how we would do it, just literally you know, tell us what we need to order based on exactly what's ordered. I'll show you how we can change that setting where it'll base it off of our current inventory here in a second. So all of these April 20th um, purchase orders were just created when I, when I clicked that button. So if we click into Happy Dairy, for example, you'll see that it wants to order 20 cheddar cheese, one strawberry yogurt. Um, that's exactly what we need to fulfill all the orders. If you wanna fluff that because you know that you're gonna you know, end up going through an extra five or you'd like to personally take 10 home to the family, you can always increase these numbers and change them and then click save down here to save it. Um, so this is you know, something that you've got free form access to where you could add other products, change quantities, et cetera. But by default, it's only gonna list exactly what you need. So let's say that um, we're happy with these purchase orders. We'd now like to send them out. You can checkbox these or you could checkbox all on the page. And then down at the bottom, you'll see email select purchase orders. What that's going to do is it's going to package up that purchase order into a PDF and send it out to the supplier's email address that's on record in their profile. You'll see under autoresponders, there's actually an autoresponder type called purchase order email. So you can control the main email that goes out and what the body of that message is and what it says, and then it's going to attach this PDF to that email. So keep in mind you can control that content. So if I, if I had checkboxed email, it would have, um, instead of the send email button, it'll have a checkbox to show you that that was actually sent out. So it's easy to see which purchase orders you've actually sent and which ones you haven't. You'll also see as soon as I uh, click check in on something, it's gonna mark that as checked in. So it's easy to see what you've sent, what you've checked in, et cetera. Now let's say you, you sent your purchase orders, Happy Dairy sends you, uh, you know, their, their truck, and on the truck, they've only got 15 cheddar cheese. You can always come into that old purchase order, modify it down to 15, which is actually what you got, save it, then go back to the list, and you could check this in with those, those new quantities in there. So if I click check in inventory, it's now just added 15 cheddar cheese to my live inventory so that people can order those on the front end and that other item as well. 
So this obviously keeps track of the history of all of your old purchase orders. You've got some options to filter up here. You've got uh, header columns that you can sort by up here, et cetera. So let's look real quick at um, creating a blank purchase order. So if I choose this option, you'll see that um, I've got six suppliers selected. So I'm gonna deselect all those. I'm gonna say I only wanna create one for Billy's Meat Farm. And I'm gonna say generate purchase orders. And you'll see what we've got now, a blank purchase order for Billy's Meat Farm. So if I click into that, this is when I could start adding product. So I could grab you know, almonds, I could grab another, uh, Bartlett pears, et cetera, and start building this out manually. And that's just another way to create kind of a you know, purchase order that the system's unaware of. It's not tied to any specific order data. It's just something that you know that you need on the farm. So now let's look at the settings we've got. So if we go into company settings, you will see down under purchase options here. We've got kind of a hidden setting for base purchase orders on inventory level left in stock. By default, it's no. Um, so you can choose whether or not you want to base this on total or inventory as of today. Um, typically, that would be total inventory. So that's going to take into consideration everything that um, you know is in the future as far as orders go. So that's a setting that you can change before you generate the purchase orders that will then take into consideration your inventory levels that you've already got on hand. So that's kind of the base of purchase orders. If you guys have any deeper questions, obviously reach out to support or your project manager, and we're happy to go you know, through this in depth kind of in person uh, with your particular scenario.